Good afternoon um, out there in virtual world and welcome to our first live stream of the Abbey Church coming from 600 Richmond here in Victoria. Um, it is a blessing to be able to do this today. My name is Rob Crosby Shearer um, and I'm one of the folks who helps curate and put together this, um, this experience um, and part of this community and it really is a community. Um, of people who want to kind of come together and collaborate to continue to worship. Um, I don't think I have to say too much about the times we're living in and why we're doing this, but it's probably um, obvious that we can't, um, we can't be together. And so we are broadcasting and we have about five or so people kind of spread out throughout the building here um, our musicians are the closest to each other and they're still a, a good number of feet apart just to kind of continue to try our own um, physical isolation in this time. Um, I do ask you to bear with us. Um, we're, we're just figuring this out as we go along and we're hoping it all works. We're hoping you can hear me right now. Um, we have some stuff. We have some stuff to still work out in the week or two to come. But hopefully, this this gets a little more streamlined. It gets a little more clearer on the audio. But just if if there's times you can't hear or whatever, please do let us know. And speaking of letting us know, Roxy, um, Roxy Humphrey is in one of the faraway offices, and she is on the chat on YouTube. And so that chat can be a place where you can give your feedback. You could say, speak up. You could say um, how things are going, how you're feeling. She's there to monitor that. Um, you can also submit prayer requests. And when the prayers of the people come, Roxy's going to go live from that office and she's going to feedback any prayer requests that you might um, be able to send. So wherever you're joining us from, wherever it is in the world, please do feel free to, uh, to do that. Um, it is the fourth Sunday of Lent. Um, in the tradition, at least of the Western Church, there's, it's called Letere Sunday, and this word Letere comes from an old collect, um, I think from the Tridentine rite, which starts rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. It seems a little maybe counterintuitive to jump for joy on a, on a, um, at a time like this when there's so much anxiety, but as I wrote to the community earlier this week, I think there is something to the idea of offering joy in the face of anxiety, offering hope in the face of fear, and offering a resurrection story when disease and even death seem to have the last word. And we're reminded as we gather today that disease and death don't have the last word. Um, so we will rejoice. There's this great tradition in the church where, um, where um, servants back in, in um, England were set free for the day to kind of go back home. It was almost kind of a mini jubilee. So we're not going to get too, too happy clappy today, but at the same time, we're hoping there's a little bit of joy in our gathering together. Um, we've We've made a decision uh, today to continue our liturgy similar to, to what it usually is. It's a little bit pared back and won't be quite as long, but we, have, we are going to continue to um, celebrate the Holy Eucharist or communion. And it was a difficult decision. There's been all sorts of conversations uh, as to whether that's something that's appropriate to do. And we wanted to just say that... Um, when we celebrate the Eucharist, though there, there's a beauty in coming together to actually partake in those elements of bread and wine and body and blood, there's also a deep, deep theology that what we are doing at that time isn't just located in a specific time or happening in a certain place, but it actually reaches beyond time and beyond place across history, across all um, at least Christian history for when people gather. So we're going to do this as an action, not as a mere symbol, but as a way to retell that story of Jesus in his last days, as a way to remember at a time when we can't actually come together and be members together. So we won't be partaking of it um, on the screen today and as a way to 
remind us that there is something even in the deprivation of being able to receive it that calls us to a different kind of solidarity. So um, we'll see how that feels, how that goes. Please offer your feedback as to how that feels. Um, we're, we're certainly open to conversation. Um, in case you've joined late, just a reminder down on, I think it's this side, if the screens are mirroring properly, there should be a chat room, chat box where Roxy is, is monitoring that on behalf of the Abbey Church. Please do feel free to sort of feed things back to her um, and offer prayer requests as well. Last thing I'll say is that um, we're, going to, um, we're going to be doing this as far as we know through, through the next period. We don't know how long that will be, um, but we're going to continue this time of gathering in this way on Sunday afternoons. A little note that we're gonna change things next week at three o'clock. We are a shared ministry of both the United and Anglican Church. And next Sunday at four o'clock, um, the primate, which is the, the National Archbishop of the Anglican Church, is doing a, a streaming prayer um, and calling Christians to come alongside her to do that. So we're gonna kind of go from three to four and then encourage folks to flip over to Facebook <laughs> to, to listen to her. So next week, three o'clock. Um, and finally, morning prayer is happening every day. Emmaus Community's gathering in Zoom. If you are um, interested in joining us for that, all are welcome. It's about a half hour long usually, and you're more than welcome to join us on Zoom whenever you can, 7.45 Pacific time, uh, weekdays, and then at nine o'clock on weekend mornings. So with that, let's just, um, still ourselves and Melanie is going to um, welcome us to this territory. Welcome to the service of worship with us at the Abbey Online. We begin by acknowledging the traditional territory upon which we gather this day. For many thousands of years, the Coast Salish peoples have sought to walk gently on this land. They offered assistance to the first European travelers to this territory and shared their knowledge for survival in what was at times a harsh climate. We continue to seek, even in these turbulent times, a new relationship with the original peoples of this land, one based in honor and deep respect. In accordance with this respect, we welcome all people, regardless of race, creed, age, cultural background, or sexual orientation, to worship at this safe place the Abbey Church. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also with you. Let us sing together.
loving grace offered by our Creator. Let us turn to the light and confess our sins. Before God, with, with the people of God, we, we confess our sins, the, the ways we wound our life, the lives of others, and the life of God's world. Almighty God, draw you in and cleanse you from your sin, that you may walk in the light of the risen Christ. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please follow along on your uh, liturgies. I never did uh, tell you where they are. Hopefully you can see that in the chat room, but abbeychurch.ca slash blog slash liturgies. It's right at the top.
How does she come, my joy, when she comes walking over the wasteland and the empty waves? She comes unbidden between sleep and waking. She comes like winter jasmine on cold graves. She comes like some swift wind. She fills my sails and on we surge, cresting the wine-dark sea, the fine prow lifting as my vessel heals, the tiller tugs and quivers, and I'm free of all the land's long cares. As that brisk breeze sings in the thrill and tremor of taut stays, so my heart's rigging, tuned and taut as these, sings with the wind that freshens into praise. For when joy comes, however brief her stay, she parts my lips, and I know how to pray. Let us pray. Rejoice, O people of God. Rejoice always. In the face of anxiety and disease, we as a people are called to remember and rejoice. In the midst of Lent, even in the midst of our sorrow and our brokenness, we lay these before God and we rejoice. O oh, great healer of all, comfort, comfort your people, we pray. Be with us this day. Guide our voices, our hearts, and our hands as we worship you from near and far. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please. 
to the Ephesians. For once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them, for it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly, but everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper, awake. Rise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. I invite um, folks to prepare their hearts to uh, hear the, the gospel. I'm going to sing. of Jesus Christ according to John. As he walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, no, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, then how were your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. And they said to him, where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, he put mud in my eyes. Then I washed and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, how could a man who is a sinner perform such signs? and they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, what do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. And he said, he is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? 
His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that he now sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age, ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God, we know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become disciples? Then they reviled him saying, You are his disciples, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. This is the Gospel of Christ. friends at the Abbey Church, uh, Rob has invited me to share a reflection on the Gospel of John with you this afternoon. The Lord be with you. In this time and place, we find ourselves at one moment enjoying this beautiful sunshine, this particular piece of paradise in the world, and the next moment we're full of questions. Maybe we're out in the yard or spending some time with our kids and then suddenly the wave of reality comes back quickly to our minds. We've begun limiting ourselves to the constant news on the internet, on television and radio. It just is so much information. But we can't help having questions ourselves, practical questions that need reliable answers, questions about the day, about our community, and about our loved ones, but also deep questions that shake our faith, like those who are in today's gospel reading. We too continue to practice asking questions of Jesus. These days, even though we don't wanna go there, and maybe we shouldn't go there at all, questions like those in the time of Jesus might also surround us Teacher, who sinned? Was it the people of China, of Italy? Was it the travelers, the hoarders? Was it the folks that don't consider themselves vulnerable? People who disregard hygiene and social distancing protocols? People who didn't stay in quarantine? Jesus, who can we blame for this pandemic? Why is this happening? And I suspect that Jesus would respond in the same way that he did all of those years ago. No one has sinned. No one has sinned to bring this about. It just happened. Stop looking for someone to blame. The community is divided enough. 
The world can be divided enough. I am calling you to unite in love. Use the eyes of faith and look for God's presence in the middle of it, bringing healing, bringing peace, bringing a call to serve the sick and the isolated. Now I know I've been seeing these signs of God's love so vividly these past days. Have you been seeing them too? As soon earlier this week, I sent out a pastoral letter to the congregation that I serve, and I received many emails right away from young families, from people with teenagers who are at home, asking, how can we help? Can we do grocery runs for the vulnerable, for the elders? Can we, how can we offer support to the parish? I was really heartened. It wasn't just one email. It was a few emails. I was talking to a colleague who's a pastor in Prince George, a Lutheran pastor. He said that the congregation put out a bin and a note to the community to consider giving back some of the items that may have been purchased in a panic, another human reaction. And maybe they were having second thoughts, a kind of confession. And the congregation offered this bin, kind of a way of forgiveness, to bring some things back for those who are in need. The pastor, my friend, was saying that overnight, the bin was filled to the rim. On Wednesday, as I was going through the checkout at Thrifty's, I, um, I noticed that the cashier was, was really, she looked tired. And I said to her, thank you for working so that the rest of us can get our food. And she looked at me with that look of a person who's been trying to hold it together all day long. But in that moment, the floodgates broke. She started to cry a deep an exhausted cry, and she said, you're welcome. And just today, I was talking on the phone with a family whose beloved member is in hospital and has to abide by the new hospital regulations that only one person at a time per day can visit. They've been visiting by FaceTime, which is by no means their first choice. But in some strange way, it helps with deep connection in a time when our instinct is being close to those we love, when the reminder of God's love made manifest in so many ways is the most important thing that matters right now. Look for God's presence in the middle of all of this, bringing healing, bringing peace, bringing a call to serve the sick and the isolated. Jesus doesn't turn away from us, because of our fearful questions. Fearful questions are our nature, human nature. But God, Jesus, does refocus our questions, turning us from self-serving, self-excusing approaches, moving us outwards, even now, outwards towards concern for our neighbor, our community, and our world and especially to the primary concern for how and where God remains active and alive in this world, even now. Through the eyes of faith, may we admit our blindness to this primary concern, that Christ may enable us to truly see and in this time of new reality, let us see it everywhere. Let us pray. God of soulful love, a love that finds us and lifts us in the most confusing and despairing of times, with gratitude we enter the sacred space and time, not to remain as we are or have been, but to be led somewhere new. Shepherd us now. Hold us now. Carry us homewards with one another into the heart of your love. Amen.
Shema Israel, Adonai Elohim, Adonai Ahad. Sing together. Hear, O Israel, Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Can't unmute. Just come on here. Oh, it's working? Um, I think it's working now. <clears throat> God, our faithful shepherd, we depend on you for everything we need. For daily food, for guidance and protection and health. For healing and injury and comfort in sorrow. You respond in abundant provision. Thank you for your tender care of us. Thank you for soothing the wounds of this life. Thank you that in the presence of enemies and viruses, and especially the last enemy of death, you are with us as shepherd, host, home, and companion. Knowing your faithfulness in our lives, we bring before you the lives of others. And there are many that are on our hearts. Specifically, we pray for those who are crossing borders, for Ali, Sunny, Josh, Nafar, for John and his students, and for Joey, Simon, and Jenny, who are in Ecuador, unable to come home. And for all asylum seekers. We also pray for Mike's son, Dylan, for those fearful of financial insecurity or who have lost or will lose their work. We specifically pray for Quinn and his family and also for Caroline in her grief. And for those who are also sick and recovering. We think of Sarah and Sue. And we also lift up to you Nancy Kennel, Reverend Karen's mom, as she continues chemotherapy in Bellingham. And we lift up to you all whose immune systems are compromised in this season and pray for your peace and protection. We entrust all things to your goodness and mercy. Bring healing to those who are ill in mind, body, or spirit. Bring release to those who are held captive by old hurts or new bonds that oppress and entangle. Bring freedom to those unjustly accused, relief to those burdened with depth, comfort to all who suffer from abuse of any kind. And we also pray for all of us who are isolated and we pray that you would be with us and be our company and remind us of our belonging within you and within your triune community. Compel us to be better stewards of creation 
so that our habitation is sustainable and responsible. Loving, help us to see the world as you see it, to see others as you see them, and to see ourselves rightly too. And because you have come into this world for judgment, we can leave our judgments behind. Pursue us all with your goodness and faithful love until goodness and faithful love fills every heart and informs every action. We pray these things in the name of the one who came that we might see Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.
Receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for you and given for this aching world. Feed on Christ in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving, for these are the gifts of God for you, the beloved people of God. Thanks be to God. sing wherever you are.
tender care. In this Eucharist, we celebrate your love for us and for all your world. May we show your love in our lives and know its fulfillment in your presence. Hold us in this time of uncertainty and guide us with your peace. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Just before we sing our um, closing song today, um, thank you for joining us in this time of worship. Thanks to um, those who contributed by the, either the pre-recorded segments or um, uh, are here scattered throughout the building for, for Breno, who's doing all the tech, and for Roxy on the um, prayers and on the, on, on the chat, and for, um, for all of you who have gathered wherever you might be. Take heart, keep courage. Um, we're going to sing Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness. If you're following along on the song sheet, just ignore the third stanza. So it's one, two, four, and five. Praise the One Who Breaks the Amen. Mm -hmm. 